All right, so we're trying to finish. I'm sorry about the interruption, a little technical difficulty. I think I was uh, explaining why we hate LSU so much. And I'm going to cut to the chase uh, because they don't deserve any more of our time this morning. Uh, uh, anyway, it's this deeply seated rivalry. And I got to be honest, I have, you know, sort of thought to myself, if the Lord told me to go to Baton Rouge and to preach to the miscreants at LSU, like what if I had been assigned to the Wesley Foundation at LSU? Uh, would I go or would I try to get out of it? I have to admit I'm a little like Jonah. I would try by hook or crook to get out of that assignment. I would do whatever it took not to have to go down there. It's just hot. I think there's state birds and mosquito. Uh, it's terrible. It's, it's just swamp. Nothing but swamp and spicy food and Zydeco music, whatever that is. It, it, anyway, I'm being a little facetious. Obviously, Louisiana has a lot to offer. But um, I don't want to go there. I don't. I don't like the purple and gold. I don't like uh, their attitude. I don't. Like, it's just not what I want. Uh, and yet, Jonah has to go exactly where he doesn't want. Because here's the thing: God cares about Nineveh, and I'm going to go ahead and say this on film: God cares about LSU and the people. Well, I don't think he cares about the institution, but he cares about the people. And um, he cares about the people, and he loves them. Uh, God also cares about Jonah. And God, uh, as Jonah's, ser uh, Jonah's God's servant, we've seen that. And that God's not going to allow his servant to walk around with hate in his heart. He's not going to do it. He's not going to permit his servant to continue to serve with this overarching issue of hatred boiling inside of him. And so he's going to force him uh, to do the very thing he doesn't want to do. And um, that's the way God is because God is working for all of our redemption. Uh, he knows that the people in Nineveh need to repent. And he knows that Jonah needs to somehow find their humanity and be able to empathize and somehow be at peace with these people. So he gives them this assignment, which is good for both of them. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm hoping that the Lord in his mercy will not send me to Baton Rouge anytime soon. But, you know, I, I realize that when that day, that day could come and I'll, and I'll know why. Because, because God wants all of us. You cannot serve God um, with perpetual hate in your heart. So, so this is a lesson. God certainly calls the imperfect into his service. He, he's not calling perfect people. He is calling people who are anything but perfect. But uh, this is the work of sanctification that over time, we are supposed to grow in grace in the Holy Spirit. Uh, we have to become more like Jesus and embody um, the gifts and, and graces of the Holy Spirit over time. Uh, and that's, you know, that, that march to sainthood. What does St. Paul tell us? Not that I have yet been made perfect, but that I strive on towards that goal. So that's... that's part of it. And um, when we kind of mash the brakes intentionally, when we uh, rebel specifically and tell the Holy Spirit, no, you may not continue to sanctify, say, this part of my life. You know, listen, God, you can fix the rest of me, but my hatred for LSU is off limits. Uh, that's I'm keeping that one. God's not going to put up with that. Uh, he's going to say, nope, you're either in or you're out, pal. And sometimes, and I want to say this, um, it's better for Jonah to spend three days in the belly of the whale or the fish than, than an eternity in hell for being in constant rebellion to God. Uh, Jonah's uh, discipline that God puts him through is an act of love. He's straightening out 
his prophet. Uh, because being a prophet is kind of a special thing. Being a servant, when God calls someone to be in his service, uh, there are blessings that come with that, and there's also a little more responsibility that comes with that. And, and I often kind of joke, but I'm not kidding, that when, when God and I have you know, conversations, uh, I hear him quite clearly because he's usually yelling at me um, to get my attention. So, you know, there are times when I've been very blessed to see God's hand at work in a very real way. There's things I've seen that I cannot deny, um, not just the existence, but the very active presence of God. And so that's tremendous blessings. And then there are times when I've screwed up, when the Lord has to kind of take me out behind the woodshed and say, we're going to have a serious talk, I'll because um, I expect a little more out of you. Now, fortunately, I have not gone so far that I've ended up in the belly of the whale. Not, not yet, but um, I, hope, I hope I can avoid that. Um, but Jonah's a cautionary tale. When the Lord calls us into his service, and this is the mistake I think that Jonah makes, it's not about me. Um... It's about the people I'm supposed to be serving. So Jonah throws a temper tantrum, and that affects God's plan to, not his ability, I want to be clear about this, but his plan for God to reach out and redeem these people in Nineveh. Jonah raised his hand and said, I'll be your instrument. But when it came time for Jonah to do his job, he said, nope, not those people. And God said, uh, you don't get to do that tool. You told me you wanted to be the hammer? Well, buddy, there's the nail. And so it's, it's a little different for those who are in God's service. Um, but you'll notice this too, and I think this is important. We see this a couple of times, like when uh, that crazy story when Alicia, the kids are making fun of him, and so a bear comes out of the woods and mauls the kids for making fun of Alicia. Like, it's a crazy story. Also, you notice... Nobody, no man lays a hand on Jonah. I mean, they throw him over the boat, but, but you know, Jonah's not injured by any person. It's the fish. Um, God deals with his own servants. God deals with his own. So, uh, you know, there's a stint in which, and this is repeated, you know, the people of Israel are not permitted to lay a hand on a prophet. But God deals with his prophets on their own. If they're screwing up, God takes care of it. So uh, we have here, I want to get to the gospel before we run out of time this morning. Um, John the Baptist put in prison. And at this point, uh, Jesus had kind of been down there doing a very similar ministry to John. And so when John the Baptist is put in prison, Jesus does two things that are kind of strategic. Number one, Jesus backs up and goes to Galilee, heads towards home. But he doesn't go to Nazareth. He goes to Capernaum, Bethsaida in particular, and he starts recruiting. Okay. Uh, now John had disciples, and Jesus figures out uh, if, if John had disciples and they can arrest John, then at a very minimum, I need some disciples. And I, need, I need, probably need to get out of here for a while. Jesus, however, is not running way, you'll notice that um, what, he, what he preaches in the Galilee is exactly what John was preaching, which is the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe in the gospel. And so Jesus picks up his message, his mission, becomes exactly where John left off. And, and I think this is an important notion for us because Jesus uh, is kind of at a Jonah moment. They've taken his cousin, obviously someone he cared a lot about, respected, and they've arrested him. And Jesus at that moment could have gotten angry. He could have gone down to Herod's where they had him, and who knows what, called the angels in, and done some kind of miracle, gotten John out of prison, maybe led kind of a populist insurrection against Herod, gotten John out of prison. I mean, everybody thought John was a righteous man. Um, uh, he, he could have gone to get to, to Nazareth and kind of hit out for a while and just, let's just cool it. But he doesn't do either of those things. 
rather than putting his own sadness or his own fears or his own anger uh, at the forefront of his mission, Jesus is not deterred and continues the mission. Okay? He's going to keep doing what John was doing because he and John both understand that the mission is bigger than both of them. The, the mission is from God, and that's, that's bigger than any kind of personal uh, anger or personal issues or even personal fear, even their lives. I mean, both of them will end up giving their lives for this larger message of repentance and redemption through Jesus Christ. Uh, and so he, of course, starts uh, recruiting, and as he's recruiting them, um, they kind of come immediately, and he recruits fishermen, not priests, not learned men, not people who are very savvy. Um, he, uh, he recruits imperfect, normal people, which is terribly encouraging, I think, because if... Uh, if four guys from the kind of redneck part of Israel can become uh, four of the most important pillars of the church, then maybe, maybe there's room for this redneck from Mississippi who has this deep grudge against LSU. Uh, and in spite of myself, in spite of all my shortcomings, uh, maybe uh, God has work for me to do. And work for you too. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, or, or whatever problems you think you may have, whatever insecurities you have, I'm not good enough to serve God because of X, Y, and Z. God doesn't care about that. God has work for you to do in the kingdom. Um, may not be preaching, may not be prophesying, but it may be. Um, the question is not to let our fears or anger or even prejudices um, interfere with listening to what God is saying to us and to put the mission of God before all of our concerns. Jonah allowed his petty hatred of this city to interfere with, with his calling. Jesus sees uh, the, the unlawful arrest of his cousin, but does not let that deter him by anger or fear from continuing the mission to which he and John had committed their lives. I, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm not Jesus, but I mean, if it had been my cousin, I wanted to go down there and if I could have gotten him out, I would have gotten him out. Uh, I got a cousin, Jake, uh, who's my second cousin. And, uh, and Jake and I have been best friends since we were kids. And, you know, uh, Jake's a good guy. And, and if Jake just got arrested, um, I'd do anything I could to help him get him out. Um, so, you know, when I see John the Baptist go, I think, well, surely Jesus, with all of his power and all of his righteousness and his ability to lead people, could have gone down there and gotten him out. And he probably could have. But that ain't the mission. Serving God is about listening to what God is telling us to do. That's, that's a hard thing. And uh, it's about putting our own prejudices and opinions and so forth aside at times uh, in order to, uh, to fulfill the will of God. So I want to close this week with just a brief thing. Uh, Y'all may remember when we, do, when we did have church every week, we, in the pastoral prayer, we prayed for the civic authorities and we prayed, we prayed for our president, uh, regardless of who the president was. And, and this week in particular, I want to close with prayer. And I want to say this, that for the past, I'll say several years, um, there's been a lot of division and contention in our country. 
and certainly surrounding this election. That was the unfortunate case. We have all got to turn the page on that. Every one of us. I have opinions, you have opinions. Everybody's got an opinion about the last president, the president before that, the president before that, you know, we will. Um, whether you voted for the guy or whether we didn't vote for this guy, President Biden is now the president. And we as Christians are instructed by St. Paul to pray for our civic authorities. And I think we should all pray for the good of our country. And I'm going to say this. Um, no matter how I voted, I'm pulling for President Biden. Because I'm pulling for America. Um, I want to see President Biden succeed because I want to see America succeed. And I'm tired. I'm tired of being divided from my neighbors. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do, you know, here it is January, uh, a little late resolution, I suppose, but I'm going to try to do my best to listen to what God tells me to do. Love my neighbor. Uh, pray for those who I might disagree with, but try to find unity with them. Remember that I have more in common with people I disagree with than, than I don't. Um, and then try to, try to pray for President Biden every day. Because I want him to succeed. I want America to succeed. And um, it's real easy to point fingers at people when things aren't going well. Um, but not everything is LSU's fault, as much as I struggle with that. Not everything is LSU. Um, not everything is the fault of political parties. Sometimes we just need to do a better job of being the change that we would hope to see in the world. It's Christ who looks at the church and says, you are called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And I shouldn't expect anybody else to be doing that job. We should be doing that job. All right, so um, also from Luke, you know, the Lord tells us when we put our hand to the plow to begin a new work, we don't look back. Um, if you liked the last guy, great, but he's done. If you didn't like the last guy, great, he's finished, but he's done. Um, no matter what you thought about the last guy or the guy before that or the guy before that, we've got to do the best we can with what we've got right now. And so instead of trying to argue about how we got to where we are, what we need to do is focus our energies on how do we move forward in a positive direction right now, right now. Um, the problems we face are what they are. So nobody likes complaining. Let's pick up what we got, try to love one another, move forward. So I'm gonna offer a prayer for the new president and then I'd like to close with the Lord's Prayer this morning. Uh, Lord, we are commanded to pray for the civic authorities. And we pray Lord, that you would help to sow love and charity in our hearts. Help us to be active uh, in, in solving the problems that we may see. And not to just point fingers or wait for problems to get fixed for us. We lift up. Uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them and grant them wisdom and guide them in truth that they may lead our nation well. We pray that you would draw us close to you, Lord, that we may hear your voice and be humbled. Remind us to care about the poor and help us to find ways to do that. Forgive us, Lord, of our hubris. Forgive us, Lord, we have not loved our neighbors. And help us, Lord, to be united as a people. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.